Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us on Morning Markets from True Potential. Today, we'll just look back on last week and what happened in markets on Friday, and then we'll look ahead to what we can expect from, from the week ahead. So just recapping then Friday's market performance, equity markets generally continue to move positively through the course of Friday and just building on that trend that we've seen through the course of last week where markets have gradually on the equity side moved higher. I think when we look at it and think about it, the factors that have really been influencing sentiment in markets over the past number of weeks are those factors that we've been discussing for, for a number of months now and just re recapping those for everybody if we think what they are, they're COVID-19 thinking about infection rates, hospitalisation rates and then the rate of vaccines and the rollout that we're seeing there, the restriction measures, how they're being eased or in certain instances uh, lengthened in terms of their tenure, then thinking about fiscal support, very much that's a global phenomenon, but also the discussions that are ongoing within the US in terms of the current fiscal support package that has been discussed at some $1.9 trillion or close to 9 or 10% of GDP. And then monetary accommodation, the, the low interest rate environment that we have from central banks and their ongoing commitment to their, their quantitative easing programmes. Those, those four factors have come together to really influence sentiment and sentiment has waxed and weaned as those have changed over, over the weeks and indeed months. I think just thinking then about other asset markets on Friday, what did we see? Well, we did see in the sovereign bond markets, particularly in the US and in the UK, we did see yields move out um, further. So if we look at the US and we think of where the 10 year ended up, ended the week yielding 1.21%. That was a move of five basis points on, on Friday alone. So moving out five, five basis points. Just looking at the, the longer end of the curve in the US and looking at the, the 30 year bond there, what can we see? We can see it's yielding 2.01%. We have to go all the way back to the, the beginning of February last year to get the, the 30 year US Treasury with a 2% starting yield. So that gives you a magnitude of, of the change that we've seen in, in bond markets over the course of the past couple of weeks. That's all coming through as we've been discussing because of inflation expectations building and how that translates to the, the fiscal support package that, that's coming through. Just looking at the UK, where did the UK 10-year gilt end on Friday? It ended at 0.53%. So again, that, that movement out in yields that we've seen. And indeed, a similar picture is, is very much evident across a large proportion of sovereign curves across the globe. Just on currency markets, over the course of last week, it was a return to that trend of the, the dollar weakening. So over the course of the week, we saw the dollar weaken about 0.6% on a trade weighted basis. Looking at that in terms of some of the, the beneficiaries, um, sterling did, did outperform. It strengthened 0.9% against the dollar over the course of the work the week, sorry, and is then trading at one one spot 385. So continuing to grind higher as we've seen over the past couple of weeks. I think one of the things on Friday that has certainly captured a lot of attention in the press is around UK GDP and that 9.9 .9 contraction that we saw on an annual basis. What's not um, discussed or is tucked away in the article is just the improvement that we actually did see on a quarter and quarter basis. So surprisingly, despite the, the backdrop of, of lockdown, um, the, the challenges that that has posed to business, both in the, the manufacturing and in the services sector, we did actually see quarter and quarter GDP growing 1%. So I think that you know, despite the restrictions, it does show a degree of resilience, adaptability, etc. by consumers in the business community. So that's something that we can look to see how that builds as we come into the, the first quarter of 2021. Clearly, the, the magnitude of the lockdown within services may influence that more pronouncedly, particularly in, in January, February. But again, a, a positive as opposed to maybe the negative that's focused upon in terms of the 9.9% the contraction. Just then looking to the week ahead then, what can we expect from a, a data point of view? Quite a lot uh, to come out over the course of the week. Um, minutes from both the ECB and the Fed on their rate decisions in January. They'll be 
closely scrutinised, and, and particularly those minutes from the Fed, in terms of what has been discussed around the inflation trajectory, how that is evolving, what are some of the key indicators that the the voting members of, of the Fed are looking for to think about um, the inflation dynamics that the US is likely to experience. Just then, also we've got quite a lot of data out of Asia. Um, Japan kicks that off and indeed has started today with um, fourth quarter um, GDP numbers and also industrial production numbers. I think the GDP numbers are, are really worth focusing on a little bit just in terms of the stop-start nature of what we've seen from Japan, but also just these numbers actually are, are, are pretty good um, in comparison to maybe where expectations had been. So if we look at it, fourth quarter GDP grew 3.0% um, quarter and quarter. That was well ahead of expectations that were for some 2, 2 and a bit percent growth to come through there. And to give some context to that overall performance then of the Japanese economy in 2020, the economy contracted some 4.8% over the course of, of the year. If we compare that back to the UK, as we discussed earlier, decline of 9.9%. Industrial output, um, again, was a little bit muted for, for Japan in, in December, um, increase, or sorry, falling 1% month on month. But again, better than expectations. Expectations were expecting a fall of some 1.6% month on month. So a number of, of positive points there to, to really pick out. Also, just this week, we'll get the, the PMI data points, that forward-looking survey evidence as to how businesses are thinking about both from a services and, and a manufacturing perspective, and we'll report that as we go through. Looking really to, to the day ahead then, um, Asian markets start to return from the Lunar New Year holiday, and we're seeing that coming through in terms of the performance of some of those markets that are reopening the likes of South Korea. Japan has continued to, to move forward and benefiting from those positive economic data points that we've touched on. And indeed, the, the Nikkei 225 is traded through 30,000 today. For those with a long memory, the last time it was there was in 1990. Looking at just futures markets, they're pointing to a positive start to equity markets today, both in uh, the UK and Europe. The US market is closed for President's Day. Please do join us again tomorrow. Many thanks. Subscribing to True Potential YouTube channel is quick and easy. Simply go to your YouTube app on your phone, type in True Potential and press the red subscribe option. You'll then be notified as and when new videos are released.